Uh, well, when I was six, I saw like a little toy keyboard in the toy store. And uh, I don't know, I just wanted to play. Good afternoon, Zeb. It's so lovely to meet you here on Zoom. Uh, you too. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. It's a great pleasure. I saw you on, on Instagram and uh, uh, playing the piano and uh, what a, a wonderful talent you have at your age to be playing like that. Thank you. So um, when did you discover that you want to play the piano? Was it something, uh, you know, the, the sound from, of the piano? What was it that intrigued you? Uh, well, when I was six, I saw like a little toy keyboard in the toy store. And uh, I don't know, I just wanted to play. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and and had, did you hear somebody before play? Is there in your family uh, musicians? No, um, just me. Yeah. So this from a toy store. How amazing is that? And then um, did you then ask your parents if you could play the piano? Yeah, um, I started off with getting like the keyboard and then I think I was given an upright. I think it was free from online and then it just went from there. And then um, so did you in the beginning, did you just fool around on the piano? You just played a little bit and, and, and did your own thing? Yeah, and then, yeah, pretty much. Okay, and so then when did you start with lessons? Um, I think I pretty much started, like, not sure, like a month in. Yeah. 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 And, and is there a piano teacher nearby, or did you do you have a piano teacher at school? Well, I started off with a teacher that lives down the road, so that was very helpful. But ever since I've started attending Purcell School, um, I have a teacher from school. Okay. Oh, I see. But if, before that, were you just in, in a normal school? Yeah. Okay. And then from there on, you went to Purcell, you said. Mm -hmm. And um, so, but to get into the school, is it a music school? Yeah. Uh, you have to sort of like audition. Then. Yeah. Yeah. And so you auditioned. And um, is I mean, from playing piano lessons to going to a school like that is a big difference because it's now very much more focused. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what is the what is the biggest difference for you there? Um, I just say. Well, um, the academics aren't as good, but um, the biggest change is probably having practice written in throughout the day so I don't have to do it all at home and um, the, all the chamber music opportunities. So you can still stay at home and you just go to the school or do you have to go to boarding school? Uh, it's an option, but I'm not boarding. So you can stay at home. And... Um, so did your piano teacher, your first piano teacher, did she sort of saw your talent or what made you decide to go to a school, um, you know, more a, a music school? Well, um, my old teacher um, was a teacher at a conservatoire called Guildhall. So yeah. it started off where I would go there as well. But then uh, I just wanted to like get more serious. So then I decided to go to Purcell. And now you say uh, get more serious. Do you do you have your mindset that you want to be a pianist? Yeah. Okay. And um and so practicing is for you not a problem. You 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 feel motivated to practice. Yeah. Well, you play at a very high standard. So um, <laughs> have have you thought about where this comes from? Um. Not very much. I think it's just I've been always drawn to the piano. Yeah, and and your age in your age group, you must be the the best player. No, 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 not. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, okay. So, so you have you have competition. Yeah. <laughs> and but that's also a good thing. Yeah. And and do you do competitions at your school? Yeah, it's like, for example, I had something called a concerto competition. I think they hold that once a year, where like students from certain year groups get to audition to play. And then how many hours of practice does it take? Um, well, it depends. At my age, you're expected to do, at least for piano, four hours a day or up. Mm -hmm. But like in your upper years, it's like five hours and up. And um, is, is there, do you still, I mean, do what what do you play now in, in the school? What do you, what are you taught in the school? <clears throat> like in terms of music? yeah yeah so um we it's in normal schools they have like the subject music right mm -hmm. but since it's obviously a music school they have certain subjects for theory oral notation composition performance oh okay so oral so you have to sing as well sort of yeah and and the 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 theory of course is important. And uh, do you have interest also in composing? I do, but it's very difficult. So oh, is it? Is it something you can also learn at the school? Yeah. Now tell me, what does a day look like in your school? When you tell me from the first period, how how does it uh, how does it uh, go? So um. On like a busy day musically, I like my first period is practice and then I have maybe an academic lesson and then some chamber or composition and then maybe another academic subject and then practice again. And well, sometimes it depends on the day, like okay. throughout the week, sometimes I have four hours written in on practice. But like some days have like 40 minutes. And then you still have your homework as well, your academic homework as well. Yeah. You have to squeeze that in as well. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure the academic the academic teachers must want their piece of the action as well. The academic teachers. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... um. Now, what what do you do? So you have your lessons and you have the things, but do you do performances as well at the school? Once a week, we have something called performance class where you get to like show off your pieces or chamber groups that you're doing. And are you nervous when you have to perform? Um, sort of. I've gotten kind of used to it. So that's the practice at the school to be able to perform. Yeah, but that's one. Yeah, that's wonderful. And and do you you probably learn about all the composers? Is do you have a favorite already? Um, uh, I can't really decide between either Mozart, Beethoven, or Chopin. So you like all three of them. Do you find when you learn about the composers that you also um, play the music differently or understand the music differently? Yeah, because like, because when learning about like the history of music, which is another subject that we have, they often focus on like the different notation styles and how they would have depicted certain things that are different in different periods. So, oh, I see. yeah, so that makes the music then also uh, different for you to to understand. Now, for children now in your age group, because you are 14. Yes. So is this uh, in, in the school you have the children who are and the students who are doing the same thing and they have the same interest. But for people, uh, for children outside of that school, is this something um, uh, but uh, uh, how can I say that that's not the norm what you are doing? Um, yeah, but it's kind of like, let's say you have a hobby, like, yeah. I don't know, um, playing football or something. Um, it's kind of like how you like to play a lot. So it's kind of the same for piano. So generally, that I didn't really have a problem with that. Like, but do you, 
But do you think um, in normal schools, children are being made more aware of music and, and playing musical instruments? I think it depends what school you go to, because my old school, yeah, there's a very good music department as well as academic. So I think it depends. So they, so the, the, the children you get uh, to deal with, they understand what you are doing. I mean, they understand and, and also the hard work that goes in behind what you are doing. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. So, and what are your, what are your hobbies? Because you, you can't have much time if you have to do academics and music and uh, all those subjects, but do you have hobbies as well? Um, I like cooking and baking, but really, yeah, I also just like going out in general and meeting people. Interesting that you say cooking and baking, because I, I speak to uh, many musicians and that, uh, you know, that's also something that's interesting that you do. And it's very creative, really, to bake and to cook. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Zev, uh, tell me, what, what is the dream now for you? Um, to just become a concert pianist, really. Really. Mm. And do you know um, the what it will take for you to be get to get there? Definitely, yeah. You I understand, think. yeah. And you're up for the challenge. Yeah, yeah. And have you had um, an idea, or have you had thoughts about where you wanted to play and and what exactly you wanted to do? Um, it's. Uh, what do you mean by that? Like. Where? Like, do you have a, a concert hall or somewhere where you think, hey, this would be amazing if I could play there? Oh, um, yeah, like anywhere really, but mainly um, maybe Wigmore Hall, um, Conway Hall and um, I'm not sure now, but yeah. Okay, yeah. And um, uh, do you have um, a pianist that you, that's sort of your role models that you aspire to and, and you know, that you, that you wish you could collaborate with one day? Oh, um, probably like Kissin because he, I feel like he produces like the best sound I could hope for and his phrasing is line and line is what my teacher is always telling me to do. And um, speaking of which, I'm actually going to see his concert soon in March. So. Really? And where will that be? Um, oh, yeah, in the Barbican. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Okay, so so um, you're all sorted. You know exactly where you're going. Oh, that's wonderful. Zef, it was so lovely to talk to you. You too. Thank you. And it's um, so great to hear about the school and about your program and and uh, um, the work that goes into you know going in the way to achieve this goal and this dream of yours and I wish you all the best and um, well whenever you come to Vienna you have to let me know so that I can I meet you in person you and your mum okay thank you yeah. <laughs> okay have a lovely afternoon you too. Thank you for having me. It's a great pleasure. Uh, Esther, it's so lovely to meet you here on Zoom. You are Zev's mum. Yeah, thank you so much for having him and me. <laughs> yeah. No, and uh, So fascinating what he told me and, and that he started as a young at a young age and fascinated by a keyboard in a toy shop. And you are not, a, uh, he said, you're not a musical family. I mean, I like to think I'm a musical person and that I can yeah. really appreciate classical music. I was very involved with ballet in my youth. So when I first heard the piano, it brought me back to that. So I've always been very eager to listen to him and his progress and all of that. But no, no one else plays, although he's now teaching his little brother. But no, no other musicians in the family now. In the family. But we didn't take it very seriously, I have to admit. We got him, like he said, this toy keyboard. And I just thought he would lose interest, but he was obsessed really from day one. So, yeah. Yeah, because that's also, a, you know, when you have a child and they, they ask for something, you never know, you know, you never know uh -huh. what's 
Yeah. It's such a big thing to buy a piano. So yeah, we we he remembered this correctly. He was little, but we got a free one off of some website. It was untunable. I mean, it was completely flat. We couldn't hear that at the time, but he had a teacher before the Guildhall teacher who used to come to our house. And he would say, you know, this piano is not so good. So he loaned us one of his pianos. And then from there, we were able to find our Bechstein, which we still have. Um, okay. But so he had teachers on the way that that would say to you, listen, uh, you know, he's got a talent or um, he needs to. to... Um, he's had, I think, is Tessa your fourth teacher? He started with like a neighborhood lady from the primary school. Then he got a local teacher because I couldn't really get out of the house as much. So that person came for, I think, a couple of years. Um, in the meantime, we met somebody who lives up the road, like he mentioned, that was who started working with him when he was eight. He's a concert pianist himself, and he's also at the Guildhall School. So Zef was able to clean up his technique considerably with him. And he attended the Guildhall. They have a junior conservatoire here in London set up at all the conservatoires where the children go all of Saturday and basically squeeze in a music specialist education once a week. And he also saw that teacher during the week. However, that still wasn't quite enough in the end. Once he got his diploma at age 12 and he played his recital and the repertoire, as I'm sure you know, just continues to expand in difficulty and length. We found that it was too difficult for him to do an hour before school and three hours after school every day. I was worried he was going to get injured and be too tired, really. And so he'd been asking forever to go to Purcell School, but my husband and I didn't want to limit his options too soon because yeah. we also used to attend, um, we, we spent quite a few summers in Manchester at a piano summer camp, which was always lovely. But I just saw a lot of parents who seemed very early set on certain paths for their children. And I didn't want him to feel, I wanted it to be totally just from him to have that maturity yeah. to choose. Because as you say, it takes a lot. I think you're very aware it takes a lot. But I felt I had to make sure. And I found before 13 too young. So now I feel so happy because I know he can practice at the school. He has all the support he needs. There's a whole team of professionals who know what he needs. And I can sort of just be the mom again. You know, it's, it's, it's yeah. a great because relief. It, yeah, it does take a lot from parents because you have to take them to all these. Because, of course, the, uh, yeah. many children are heading towards the same dream or goal and and you have to look for all these places where you can give them the maximum exposure as well yeah and it's, it's it is tricky because as a I'm not a musician but I found some of these events like the competitions you mentioned or I found that all I know you weren't so bothered by it but I found it sometimes not so it made me a little bit tense I don't know I just I did want that sort of pressure so yeah I found it tricky to navigate and uh I like I say I think now he's really in the absolute best of hands and we're very very grateful he's able to go there so yeah I drive him every day because wow. at home <laughs> yeah. yeah and yeah. he had to go through an audition process as well and was it auditions actually oh, yeah. okay Mm -hmm. As there was for Guildhall School. I mean, all these music programs, typically you have to audition. Mm -hmm. Even his secondary school that he went to before, which is a very uh, renowned secondary school here in the UK, they give 10 music places every year. Mm -hmm. And that's a very uh, competitive audition, you could say. So okay. he's very used to, you know, he's had to audition for certain scholarships and things like that. So auditioning is not... You're used to it, and yeah. you've always been very lucky. But um, that isn't quite the same to me as these external sort of piano competitions, where it becomes sometimes about a prize over the music. Oh, yeah, yeah. From my perspective, and, yeah, and and also the fin uh, financially, this is um, these schools are not. Uh, I mean, that you you have to pay for him to be there. 
Yeah, so here in the UK, we're lucky. We have something called the Music and Dance Scheme from the government. So okay. it's a sliding scale based on your income. This was also true at the Guildhall School. And I think the Royal Ballet School actually operates under the same Yeah, scheme. they do, yeah. That's very lucky here in the UK. Um, it's based on your income. But private okay. lessons, we certainly had to always pay for. Mm. Um, and during COVID, my husband wasn't working as much. So we were able to get some grants and help with that. And he's okay. also been really lucky that somebody, somebody's rebuilding him a new piano. So that's oh, wow. Kind of, yeah. Just amazing gift, really. Um, yeah. Which is also, I think, worth mentioning because it's a lovely thing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's very lucky. And we're really lucky. I mean, I... As a mom, I just like to check this position and see his face and see that he's happy. Exactly. He's yeah. Yeah. That no, makes me support it. Yeah. I totally, I totally agree with you and that it, it comes from him and that it's, that it is what he wants to do. Um, and, and wonderful that he has the opportunity and that, that, you know, that he, that he, loves because you can hear he enjoys what he's doing and he has this dream what he wants to do but now uh what is it now does he he do uh performances as well so, yeah yes yeah. you perform at school you yeah. perform the school mm -hmm. organizes different outside performances that yeah. he has one coming up yeah that's right we're going to be playing what a solo recital in yeah. at at Milton Hall in Peterborough. Oh on, wow! On the on the first of April. Yeah. Um, he was invited by somebody uh, who's been a longtime supporter, Isabella Lady Isabella Naylor Leyland. They invited him to play a solo recital in aid of Ukraine. Okay. Um, so it's a charitable event and a great honor and privilege, right, to be able yeah. to to do that. And playing and playing in in such a concert is it um, nerve wracking for you or or do you are you okay with that? I think the build up before the concert is more nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so when you're there, then you're fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's amazing, and um, but but so lovely that they get these opportunities for them to, you yeah. know, to experience really what it is like to to play for an audience, and not that it's not always this, because I think sometimes for for musicians it must be, um, this time spending alone, practicing, practicing, you know, so many hours alone practicing, and then when you can really connect with the audience and playing I think this must be a wonderful feeling absolutely and that's also what's so great about Purcell school versus what he had before because he's able to do chamber music he can accompany people everyone that plays an instrument so I can correct me if I'm wrong but there's even a lot of informal just playing together going on which for pianists they tend to be alone I mean when he was younger I sat with him not to give I, I never had anything to add but just for company, he, you know, yeah. time together. But yeah, it's a lot of time sort of just spent on your own. So I think it's mm -hmm. wonderful that they are able to broaden your horizon like that and play with other yeah. musicians, having to listen to others, um, listening to yeah. their performances. Is yeah. it true that you have lunchtime concerts almost every day, right? Every day. Every day. So they get to hear each other and mm -hmm. making and sharing music is... Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's, you know, like-minded um, students that are around him. So they are all working towards something. And I think that energy is amazing yes. to have that. Yeah. yeah. Very inspirational. I know he said the school, the previous school, he didn't feel the other students didn't really, um, like everyone was very, they understood piano is important yeah. to him. But as a parent, I have to say, I often felt quite odd, like, because people would say, oh, is he free? And I'd be like, well, he needs to practice. And you just oh, sound, yeah. like, you sound like such a tiger parent. You know, people don't understand that. And so I yeah. always felt a bit uncomfortable with all of that. So yeah. 
that's also just like kind of a, a load off for me personally. <laughs> I know, I know. It's uh, my. I, I had two children um, at the Royal Ballet School, and that was always the thing. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, it, they sometimes it's just well, they can't. They're not there. Oh, yeah. They're not. When yeah, they my own background is in ballet, so I can relate to this having to master the technique to express yourself artistically. Yeah. And like I say, the music touches me deeply to this day. But I think there are sadly a lot of people who are a bit perhaps pushed. You could say. Yeah. And so I am always very, I have four children and no one here plays except the Zev, but so I know it's not me, but nevertheless, I always feel a bit like people might think mm. it's pushed on him. And I'm very, uh, I, I, I just don't want anyone to, I think it's a terrible thing to do to a child. Exactly. Now I was, I was, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I always had this, this, um, outlook also that it's it's not me it's not my dream you know they have to want it to, to do it and uh you know every time uh they would say something like oh I'm so tired or I'm yeah. like oh come home come home no 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 <laughs> yeah. you have to I be to do it. Yeah. you know involved but not too invested I think is really yeah. right if he tomorrow decided actually I don't want to do this yeah can't mess with my own identity then and I exactly think that's exactly sadly yeah. something I feel I've already seen quite a lot of with especially mm -hmm. with the younger serious musicians um mm -hmm. so yeah and it's yeah it's a long it's a long journey and you know I've I've spoken to many musicians and and you here this is okay they started when they were younger and then they had to go through everything and the, there has to be the self-motivation, otherwise you cannot do it, you know, otherwise you cannot achieve that goal and, and that dream. So Absolutely. And that's yeah. also, I mean, of course, everyone has off days, but that's another reason on this practice journal that we're keeping, which I'm quite aware always that it's growing pretty big and I have mixed feelings about it. Sometimes I write about that. Um, but I'm very happy that Zev trusts me to show really just the process and the progress over yeah. results and perfection. And um, yeah. that's such a lovely thing to just share that, that it's really just a journey and it doesn't always go exactly as you want. And that's the beautiful thing. Exactly. To yeah. I'm very much like in dance, as you know, there is almost no such thing as a perfect exercise. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's you know, it's never ending and it's it's always um always learning, always growing, and uh it's that's just part of it. Yeah. And that's that's the beauty of it, I think. You know, that it's that it's that way. But it was so lovely to talk to you both. Okay. And um I really wish for you your your mum your mum sounds as a and and I'm sure your dad as well they are great support for you and your whole family mm -hmm. um so uh it's uh, I'm following you on Instagram it's very interesting to see where you are going and what you are doing so keep up with the with the great talent that you have thank you thank you so much Petra. Yeah, okay you. have a wonderful um afternoon and thank you so much for your time. You too. Thank, thank you. Too. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.